Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Miss Liz's Tea Time. That's right, it's evening tea. And tonight in the studio, I am joined with a beautiful lady all the way from Queensland, Australia. Tonight in studio, I have Yogita Wrigley, and she is an amazing lady. Yogita Wrigley is a successful businesswoman, CEO, and founder of Traveling With Me, Myself, and I. She wears a few different hats, solo travel specialist, mindset strategist, an award-winning international speaker, author, and blogger with over a decade of solo traveling experiences. Yogita was featured by one of Australian's magazines on a female change maker, finalist of an Intervation Business Award. Y Factor, and she is an ambassador for mental health and well-being with dyslexic awareness. Your Gita's mission is to get every woman to play the role of me without the mask of pretense. Her motto is solo travel and self-discovery, and her vision is helping women to unleash the power of the authentic self. And we all know Miss Liz is all about mental health. So, Yogita, the stage is all yours, dear. Thank you so much for having me. It is an absolute pleasure to share my story and be part of this tea time. It's an amazing concept. It's actually quite funny when you first said tea time, uh, like, you know, the Australian um, tea time means, or Australian New Zealand, and I guess English as well. Tea time actually means cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, again, you know, a, a good learning curve for me. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much. And um, I am super excited to share my uh, my message as, um, as uh, you know, you just read that the information that um, I'm super passionate about uh, mental health and mental health has been the, the main drive for everything I have been doing. Um, and it literally started from my own mental health and my own struggle with depression and um, being absolutely stuck with the two concepts of who I am determined by the society and who I am born as, so to speak. And that two struggles, I really um, found it hard and at one point when I got to a place where I started to ask myself these questions, why am I so unhappy? Why am I so, um, you know, disconnected with the world? And um, even in my own family, my daughters and my husband, I was really struggling to uh, feel the love and serve the love. And that all, um, you know, started me on this big question, who am I? And then the big journey on self-discovery and self-development. And that resulted in me writing this book, Finding Me, Myself and I. And uh, the biggest two reasons I wrote this book is to obviously, you know, um, help any woman who is out there feeling that, um, she, you know, she's not good enough, she's not strong enough, she's not uh, smart enough and struggling with their mental health because of all these limiting beliefs. And the other reason was my two beautiful daughters that, you know, I want to, um, obviously when you're struggling as a mother, you don't realize that you actually mess up your children's lives as well, like their mental health being. And without realizing I was messing theirs up as well. Um, so, you know, now with this journey I am on, I am obviously, you know, trying to obviously working on myself first because you can't help others unless you and until you help yourself first. And then now the next step is to help them and, uh, you know, encourage them and, and support them on everything that I've learned, so to speak. Yeah. So what did, what did you find your biggest challenge was sharing your story in a book? The Yeah, so the biggest challenge, uh, I think everyone will probably um, connect with this is being vulnerable because um, you know when you really want to share your story and you really want to make that difference you have to be so vulnerable and open to everybody's judgment you know and uh, there are so many judgments and so many perceptions that uh, you know you come across and uh, some you know kind of really hurt 
but then you have to also remind yourself that that's their perception that's their thoughts and that's where they're at and this has got nothing to do with you and so that was my biggest challenge to really learn that other people's uh, feedback has got nothing to do with you and you're on your journey and they're on their journey and you just have to allow them and hope that you know all that anger they have um, shown towards you might have um, you know kind of given them an insight on okay if she is not affected by this how can I be that way? And uh, it's some kind of like, almost like an inspiration. If, if all this anger I'm dishing out and it's not hurting her and affecting her, then how can I be that way as well? And uh, yeah, so vulnerability is, it was the biggest challenge. And because I lived in, in a bubble that I created for myself, and I talk about this in my book as well, that um, you know, I pretended to be someone I'm not, and uh, to be vulnerable and totally honest and, and totally you was was a big step, was like an absolute, um, yeah, yeah, big, huge step forward, yeah. It is a big journey, right? When you share your story, you're sharing it with the world. So there's no more secrets, there's no more hiding. It's it's out there, right? Once it's published, it's out there, so. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And, that, and that's, the, that's the big thing, like in today's day and age, you can be, out there in five seconds you know you do one live and you're on social media and next thing you know a magazine is doing an article on you and so forth so unless and until you're 100 percent believing in what um you are standing up for um you know i i say to people don't do it unless and until it's totally 100 percent you it's your authentic story it's your authentic belief and uh, you know a lot of times like you said once you're out there you're out there and <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah, there's no turning back. There's no like going all over and picking up every book, right? It's out there. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, for me, I really wanted to have this message change people's lives. I wanted to use this, my story to really empower and, and inspire people. It wasn't about me. It's about people who pick up this book and read. Because yep. as far as the, the energy I had with writing this book is that, whoever picks up this book will find a little piece of themselves in this book. Well, and that's what we do, right? When we share our stories is we want to inspire others. It's not about us. It's us saying that this is what we went through and we want you to understand that you're not alone, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That, and that, and that's literally human nature, isn't it? You know, we all have stories. Some of us want to share it because we have, um, you know, found that strength within that we are okay to share it and okay to be vulnerable. And some of us are still, um, you know, that story, um, you know, dies with us, so to speak. So, yeah. So you're an ambassador for mental health, right, in Australia? Yes. And and um, uh, dyslexia as well. And because dyslexia. I'm dyslexic as well. So it is something that I have just started to really... Um, put a lot of energy into to help people that are dyslexic as an adult and also uh, obviously as children as well because of my struggle going through school system and a half of my uh, you know mental health issues was to do with the fact that I was dyslexic and um, you know the problem with dyslexic is that we are just just uh, given the title we are um, it's our disability, um, but when you talk about disability, people, you know, expect you to have like a limp missing or a, or a, I know, or a, you know, all, all yeah. those things are physical. You can see it with dyslexia; it's not physical. So when people see you, they, 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 you know, they don't know there you have challenges, you have issues that you're dealing with on a daily basis. But if you have an arm missing or a leg missing or a, you know. Or a, or a dysfunctional face or something, they feel sorry for you. They can see it, um, and they want to help you <laughs> with, uh, you know, with anything that they can't see. They don't want to help you. In fact, they actually bully you and make jokes of you and laugh at you. So, you know, going through school system, at one point, I really wished I had an arm missing or a leg missing instead of. It's a lot easier to, sometimes, right? It than was explaining. Lot easier, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Well, I, and I find that's the same with mental health, right? Mental health, there's the stigma that 
okay, it's only poor people or pov poverty people that have mental health. It's not. It's everyone that's affected by mental health, right? Uh, they say one in four. I say one in two. I Every other person has it. And, you know, so what is the biggest challenge you find for mental health in your area? So mental health, um, like you said, it, it's, it's not status based. It's not how rich you are or how poor you are. Um, it really is something that is very different for each individual. So you can be struggling for uh, a different reason to the person next to you, so to speak. Uh, but the biggest thing is the fact that, um, you know, there is so much at the moment, like what's affecting Australia, New Zealand, pretty much the whole world the most, is there's so much information out there. There's so much chaos out there. And with this information, we're bombarded with so much. Um, and then we actually get confused. We, we are so confused with what's right for us, what's wrong for us, which direction to go in. And, and, and hence, that's the reason why I was so you know, um, convinced that self-development um, and self-discovery is the path that you need to start yeah. to really deal with how you're going to manage your uh, mental health. At, at the end of it, the, the, you know, the main idea with this is to actually eliminate that it doesn't exist anymore. So, um, you know, with, um, you know, whether you actually have a great job and you're making thousands of dollars, um, that comes with a lot of stress and demand. Um, and then you have a, a simple job that's not making enough money that comes with financial difficulties. So there's so many mixtures of different things that's happening. And another level of mental health that we don't actually address is some of it is, is actually inflicted on us at very young age from watching our parents, domestic violence, yeah. Um, emotional abuse and sexual abuse and all those things as well. It might not have happened to you, but you would have witnessed it. And subconsciously, it's um, you know, it's 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 there, and you don't really know where it comes from. You might be doing well with your um, you know with your status, your job, your um, you know financially freedom is there and everything, but you still have this issue of mental health. And you don't know where it comes from, so that's why when when I do the um, normally with the you know one to one coaching, it's very important to really dig deep, and that's where the self development and self discovery is extremely important because if you don't go deep enough and really get rid of the root cause of it, it will keep on um, kind of repeating itself because that's still there, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I strongly believe as well, like addictions and uh, abuse and everything has to do with mental health. You know, yes. it all comes back to mental health, uh, whether we were traumatized as children or not. Our parents were traumatized. It, it's that cycle, right? That pattern that's been followed. Yes. Um, I know for my children, it, it will mental health um, passed down to them absolutely because of the patterns and cycles in the family right so yeah how do we absolutely. change that we we yeah. we we do self discovery right and we find out mm -hmm. why why and what patterns and what cycles cause these effects right absolutely yeah yeah absolutely and that's uh, i'm glad you said that how do we change that is by taking total responsibilities like as soon as you go i'm totally responsible for what's happening to me that's when you start changing your habits, your patterns, your conditioning. And, you know, a lot of people I meet, uh, they love playing the role of victim. They are very happy blaming other people for everything that has gone wrong and is still going wrong. They are very happy to say, oh, my mom and dad screwed me up. My teacher screwed me up. My, you know, my boss is like this. My partner is like this. And the blame game just keeps rolling. Um, and that's why a lot of people don't reach out for mental health. Um, like they, there's help everywhere and they don't reach out for help because they are still playing the role of victim. Exactly. And that's why um, in my book, I, I really talk about that, why it's so important to take responsibilities. Um, you, are, you are only victim of yourself and no one else. And yeah. once you take that responsibility, it makes a huge difference.
Well, that's it. We have to take responsibility for our own healing. Uh, you Absolutely. know, we, the blame and complaint only goes so far. The victim playing only goes so far. But you only grow when you actually take ownership of your own life, you know. So, and, and I like that you say that, that take responsibility. And I like that you have that in your book. And when I seen your book, it was like, oh, my goodness, this is a self inward book that I need to know more, more about. And that's why I reached out to you. I was like, oh my goodness, I need to know more about this book. And then when you sent me your bio, I was like, oh my goodness, like this is exactly what Miss Liz is all about, about getting awareness out there for mental health and abuse and, you know, and all of the different things that so many people live with that are, are not spoken about because of the shame and the stigma and they don't want to be judged. Right. And, yeah. and that's why I opened this platform and I want people to understand that this is a platform for anybody to share their, their stories with and your book, just the title, me, myself, and I, it's ownership of yourself. All of the, all the titles, me, myself, and I, it's about you, right? It's not about yes. the neighbor. It's not about the parent. It's about you. And I really yes. truly love that about your book. Do you have a book that everybody can see so that the viewers that yes, are watching, exactly. they can see? <laughs> yeah. And so I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, so We can see that. Yeah. So that's, that's my um, front cover. And uh, yes, yeah, so I like, um, like you said, the me, myself and I really is taking total responsibilities for who you are. Um, and it is your responsibility to be, um, find who you are because once we are born our our you know genius is created and then the society happens the family happens and then we become someone that we don't know who we are and a lot of us keep thinking that's who we are and uh, um, I talk about this in my book how I became um, you know a, an accountant and had a very busy corporate life and very um, good financial life and, and, you know, financially free, lived in a big house and everything else. But on the outside of all of this was more like, okay, well, if that's all the case and I, you know, the picture looks so perfect from outside. So why am I feeling so, um, you know, depressed and, and so unhappy and so disconnected? Um, and, uh, you know, and a lot of people have that picture perfect for everybody else and they never really really inflect and look into what's going on so when i wrote this book i really wanted to bring all these different things to um you know to people's attention and just bring that awareness to um you know are you really living who you're born to be are you really doing what makes you happy are you really connected with what's happening in your world and are you really you know the person that your children deserve that kind of you know questions that you would um, kind of find when you're reading this book that um, you know you'll either find an answer or you go looking for an answer and that's the self-discovery part that you will uh, you know not everybody's answer is exactly the same because we all walk different paths um, and we all have different purpose on this planet but we all have got to ask these questions and that's but I'm actually getting a lot of my readers are coming back to me and saying, look, I really enjoyed that. And thank you for asking that question. Thank you for making me, um, you know, bringing awareness to this question. And now I can, um, you know, go ahead and find a lot more information on this. And of course, the second step after this book is um, they joined me on my retreats and some of them came to the retreats and we worked on these questions, which was amazing because then they got lot more depth in what their question was and what their answers are and the self-discovery journey was a lot more attractive than hard work if you know what I mean yeah we have a question for you Yogita and uh, the question is is your book available for purchase on Amazon um it is yes it is available on Amazon um it is also available on my website which okay. is um um traveling with me myself and i.com and it is available as a hard copy as well as an ebook. Yes. Okay. Now you you mentioned something about your retreats. You do retreats involving the book or steps of the book or yes. So the retreat is all about self discovery. Okay. And um, so that's the like a lot of people who have read the book are interested in doing the retreat because that's like a second step, so to speak, to uh, you know start working on your self discovery. 
some people have um, uh, you know done the retreat and then bought the book which is again you know kind of like goes hand in hand but retreats are um, like I host them all around the world um, so like obviously with the COVID it's all on hold but all the different options are available on my website and you can also like send me messages which ones you're interested in um closest to your country or easier for you to visit or a country that you've always wanted to visit maybe you join me at that uh retreat so yeah there's few options available so but you have a website you have a website Sorry. you have a website for this yukita yes yeah okay. so on my website when you are going to traveling with me myself and i dot com there is a option for retreats so you just okay. click onto that and it will give you all that uh different options um, at the moment, I haven't put dates on them because we don't really know. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> yeah with everything soon. going on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to, um, so yeah, you can um, show your interest by filling in that form that you are interested in doing a particular retreat or you want more information and then I'll contact you and we'll go from there. So do you do like big retreats or small retreats? Like, is it a small group, large group? It's it's a small group because okay. um, we want to keep it very intimate and really work on your self-discovery. So the um, the biggest numbers I have had um, has been 25, but oh, wow. normally I, I work from 12 to 20. Um, and uh, 25 has been the biggest being, um, you know, closer to home in Australia, so to speak. But um when I have, like, I've also done, like, a day um, style workshops, um, which has also um, gained quite a lot of numbers. The day style workshops over two days um, I did uh, in India, which was 200 people. Um, so that was a uh, different um, concept where retreats are a lot more, you, you get a lot more time to reflect. Uh, the day um, style workshops are more like you just, come in you have lots of workshop activities and you bounce off ideas and then you go home there and and come up with more questions for me next day so yeah so that the the workshops are more i hosted only in australia i did couple in india while i was in india which worked really well uh, but the retreats um you know they're, they're five to seven day retreats and I, oh well that's a nice retreat it, yeah it's it's a nice it, like it's not too long it's not too short yeah yeah so do you find that by sharing your story in your book, has it made a closer bond with your children by sharing your story? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, also like one of the biggest things with, with your children is that, um, you know, doing this self-discovery journey for myself and, and also writing this book that I've learned that children are not uh, yours to own like you don't own them so exactly um, and you don't raise them either <laughs> they they are for you to nurture and love yep. and uh, um you know growing up i thought we were to raise them we are, we are in charge of them till they're a certain age and we're responsible for them and and all those things that i had as as a parenting concept was all so wrong in so many ways and so many levels that now um you know trying to uh revert and and start again um you know it has it has been really nice it has been you know starting with honesty starting to just be there to nurture them and love them and provide them with freedom whether they want to um, you know go ahead and, and make something of themselves at school or workshop you know like uh, become singer like my younger daughter she loves singing and dancing my older one's very creative and, and very artistic. So they, you know, that all those things, whereas before it was like, you have to be an accountant, you have to be a doctor, you have to be an engineer. All those <laughs> you have to be a bunch of things, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, all those things that I thought was parenting, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and, and now it's like, no, no, you just gotta love them and nurture them and let them pick their own path. And that's what their soul is here for, you know, we, we are not to put all that pressure and, and stress on them to be someone they're not. Yeah. 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 I'm learning that too, as a parent, that it's not our job to tell them what to be. It's to yeah. have that open door and let them communicate with us what, what they like and what they don't like. Right. And have that mm -hmm. uh, mindset that says, okay, you know what, I might not agree with it, but it might be the good thing for you because that's what it's meant for you. Right. 
and we don't always understand as parents sometimes that it, you know, they want to go this way for a reason that we don't always see. And we have to be open to that and saying, okay, you know what? I don't know if I like this, but give it a try, right? So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's the thing we, we are um, like, this is the perception that I'm talking about in my book as well. Uh, you are not to judge. We, we have no right to judge. The only person yep. you should judge it is the fact that you are the best version of yourself. That's it. Yep. Um, and when the, the difference that I am seeing from when I was the mom who was in a denial state to now the mom who's aware of what's happening and I have worked on a lot of my own issues and my own conditioning and my own uh, belief system, I'm finding that my, you know, the communication is a lot more clear and um, the in, the fact that we enjoy each other is a lot more, um, it's it's like a special bond and it, it's, it's really nice. It feels good. You don't have to say, oh, you know, um, this is not something that you agree with or disagree with because we have no right to agree or disagree. Yeah. That's, that's their purpose on whatever they want to do. It was our conditioning that we were agreeing or disagreeing. <laughs> well, and, and it's a pattern we've learned, right, as parents. And and, yes. and, and and when you break that cycle and you break that pattern, it, you're opening a new door that wasn't ever open for generations like for myself, I broke a lot of patterns and cycles and my children are like, but, but that's not what our family does. Well, this is the new us. This is the allowing us to grow and heal, you know, and, and that's what I, I really liked about your book was that it showed the openness and the responsibility and ownership of your life. You know, just the title itself, me, myself and I is I'm owning who I am. And, you know, it's not, if you want to judge, that's your thing, but that's not what I'm going to take on. I'm sharing my story because I want to grow and I want to heal myself. Yes. Absolutely. And that's what I got absolutely. from the title from your book, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what it is. It, it, and the funniest thing is a lot of people have asked me this question, how did you come up with this name? Um, I, I didn't like my business is called troubling with me, myself and I, my book is called finding me, myself and I, and both of these names, these titles that literally picked me. So um, I like, you know, I was on a self discovery journey and my business found me. I started to really share my stories with people that were constantly asking me, why are you solo traveling? What's going on? And then of course you ask them the same question. And then you start to really see you're not the only one who's struggling and suffering. And mm -hmm. then this book came to life. And once I, um, you know, uh, started to really put pen to paper and start to really work with um, editors and publishers and so forth, they said, oh, what do you want for cover? And so I said to them, this is the image I have in my head. This is what I was doing was totally lost. And Paris, for some reason, has got that connection for me. I can't really put the the like the the like the word for that connection, but I have had this connection, and uh, I found myself there totally lost. Um, actually, standing at the spot where this picture is on the cover, and just literally going round and round like this, <laughs> looking all around, thinking, "What am I doing here? What is this all about?" You know. So that was an actual experience I had. So to transform it into a cover was very easy. It was something that I actually. Um, literally walk the walk before I started talking the talk. Yeah. And I like that. See, I, I, I like that because I say that all the time, walk the talk, right? But yes. until you know what the, t the walk is, you're going to yes. talk. Yes. Yeah. But then there's going to be that light that goes off and you're going to say, you know what, it's time to walk it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what was your thing, Yukita, that made you just, it's time to heal? Um, my biggest thing was that I started to really see that I am really messing my daughter's lives up. Okay. And if I wasn't going to heal myself, I was going to lose both of them. Um, and not, and not just that I was going to lose myself as well. And, um, the more I started to try and fix them, the more I realized they were just like turning around and looking at me thinking, Whoa, uh, you are to talk, you know, like you go have a look in the mirror. So that was that. <laughs> 
that was really like the 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 most saddest place like you know yeah. when your daughters look at you and go uh, you, you are to talk like you know what are you talking about and that's where i was like okay now if i really wanted to change anything i got to change me yeah. i got to in that respect and have that have that you know that that place where they look at me and without me saying do this they just do it because i inspire them and that that was that's the only way children will do it you can't <laughs> tell them to do it you got to inspire them to do it yeah. yeah so because we're on tea time and i do this with all of my guests you get do you have a favorite memory of tea or do you do a special tea ceremony um i actually yeah actually to be totally honest we do both i have okay. done both um uh, because of you know uh my solo traveling i have actually done quite a lot of tea ceremonies um in you know different cultures and different countries and um i do have favorite tea time uh, uh memory as well um probably the best one is uh when i was very young my grandmother used to um we were kind of like born in a um family of um i won't say poor more like average family because my grandparents were farmers so um uh, farmers slash my granddad was like a medicine man as well so it was a lot more um uh born in that style of being very aware and conscious of what you do all the time um so the memory of the tea time was that we would sit around this fire um and she would like she had an electric stove in the in the kitchen she would refuse to use that because she actually really believed the actual fire had more energy that actually made us um better humans like more alive oh, wow. humans which which is actually really really true at the time i thought oh you know how stupid grandma you know <laughs> <laughs> there's electric oh but you can just click the yeah you know, like what are you doing grandma <laughs> like you can just click it on <laughs> yeah but now now i understand why she did that and why it was so good for us the food tasted so good even though it would be the simplest food you know and um, the memories of her cooking and as as laughing and she would be singing because it will take so long to cook and the idea of eating is not to cook and then sit on the table and eat. we would be sitting all around this um hearth stove so to speak and as she cooks she will put it on your plate and we'll just keep eating Oh um, and and uh, yeah so that was that was the most beautiful memory and um and uh, I I would not replace that for anything that's yeah I tried to do that now with my children but I think I should have done that when they were little <laughs> <laughs> Yeah and the memories of grandparents from generations to now it, it's hard right like I try to do it with my grandkids and I try to do tea time with them like tea time with Miss Liz and dress up and just have that memory and i always tell the little ones don't drink it so fast just take the time to savor that cup of tea right and if it gets cold don't worry cold tea is good for you too so yeah you know <laughs> uh, yeah. so do you pass on any gener like any uh any memories like of grandma to your to your daughters like i do talk about my grandparents quite a lot um i think uh, my grandparents have more influence on who i am now like when reflecting back how um you know before school how much i learned from them kind of like pushed it deep inside and not really wanted to uh, have anything to do with it because it wasn't modern enough so to speak yeah. and uh, i had to be modern enough to fit into the society as i was you know growing into teenage and adult and so forth but now i talk about it quite often and to be totally honest i really sometimes catch myself repeating the same thing my grandfather or grandmother would have said it to me to my daughters and uh yeah which is quite funny um and uh, you know one of the very very um powerful things he used to say is that like your self love how you treat yourself and how you love yourself is exactly what other people will do to you so um you know like my youngest one is 15 and she's starting to you know pay attention to um you know the opposite sex and so forth and so forth and I'm just like, <laughs> all that good stuff right <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know what um, 
and this is what my grandfather used to say your self love you start loving yourself the right way so you will attract the right you know kind of love that you you deserve so to yeah. speak I, I would never say that i would say this because they were not my words they were my grandfather's words unfortunately i didn't listen to them but i'm hoping that my kids will <laughs> <laughs> well we hope right <laughs> yes yes absolutely so what is your message that you give out like when do you do you you're an international speaker right yeah. So when you're on the stage, what is the message that you like to give out to the, the audience? So the like I actually speak about three different topics. Okay. Um, one of them is mental health, uh, which is language of your mind. Um, two is um, authentic you, the power of authentic you, uh, which is this. This is the message that's most powerful to me is the power of you is very important to tap into and you only tap into it by actually knowing who you are you will only get to know who you are when you go on a self-discovery journey and when you do the self-discovery journey that unlocks this power and the power of it is you're the only one who has that gift nobody else has yeah. so a lot of us spend so much time copying others mimicking others you know that um is such a waste of your own gift um and uh, you know there's there's no reason why your gift should die with you you know you're born with it if you don't use it it's going to die with you yeah. um so why and spend all your life living uh you know being someone else or living someone else's dream or doing things that are not aligned with your your being your purpose on this planet you might as well you know do it right and and be your authentic self and 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 you know um yeah. use your authentic power and, and and your gift and and i always say this right be different be be you don't want to be, be a copy exactly. right you want to be unique you want to be yourself and yeah, absolutely. it might not always get the most likes or the most followers but at least you're being true with yourself you know yes yeah the likes and followers are all ego yep. um that you know like i get one phone call or one email saying how much i have changed their life that's that means million followers to me because yep. i've actually really made a difference in one person's life i can get 10 likes 12 likes 15 likes or 500 followers it doesn't matter anything because they they just there's just a, a click it's just a ego thing that you yep. know makes you feel powerful uh which in real life doesn't exist ego is your worst enemy to to be totally honest yeah um so i don't i don't even look at numbers to be totally yeah honest. for me it's quantity over quality like you know absolutely the, absolutely you want you want the right people to understand that you're not gonna change and be cut into a different cutout just because it's the comfortable way or the easy way right uh, for me everybody always says liz you always do it the hard way i uh, no, i do it my way <laughs> and i do it the way that i'm comfortable with and that i know that is meant for me it might might not make sense to a lot of people but this is what it is for me yeah, and if absolutely. i don't do me then i'm not being real yes absolutely you know. and that's and that's 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 exactly it you just nailed it there the hard way means you are facing your challenges you're learning your lessons you're allowing yourself to grow and then uh, you know eventually we're evolving and if we don't do it the hard way we are copying that means you're not aligned to who you are and not being honest to yeah. your you know yourself yeah absolutely yeah because my kids are always like mom you're weird i'm like i know i'm just a special kind of weird <laughs> I'm like, but I like my weird. Like, let me do my weird, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I my my kids are always like, Mom, don't do it that way. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, I like to want I want to do it that way. I want to play a little. I want to be fun. Like, you know, I want to I want to enjoy life. Life is so short and by being serious all the time and down, it's it's draining. It yeah, absolutely. Like you said, it is really short. And yep. I know a, a lot of us have spent so much time 
um, blaming other people and complaining and whinging and whining. So, you know, half of it is just gone doing all of that. So now it's time to really, like you said, play and live and, yeah. and uh, you know, just be weird. Great. Just be yourself. Just be you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I really, really appreciate you coming on to Tea Time and opening that door and getting people to understand that mental health does not have a face. It affects everyone. You know, whether you live with it or whether you know somebody that lives with it, it affects everyone. And we need to break that stigma that every there is no special look. There is no category or anything. People are affected with mental health all over, right? And even in Australia, they are affected with mental health. So I, I want, and that's what I want to do is I want to bring awareness to show that it's all over. It's not just in Canada. It's not just in the States. It's all over. It's global, just like this pandemic. It's global. It has no flavor and no like. It will affect whoever it wants to affect, right? Yes. Absolutely, so, absolutely. And it like like you said, it I travel all around the world all the time and mental health exists in every country and every mm -hmm. state. It's whether you are rich or poor, whether you're white or black, whether you speak English or any other language, it affects so many people and it's growing. And that's it the is. biggest problem that we're not addressing the fact that it's growing. And also it's getting to as young as 12 year olds at school um it's so it's not just for you know 40 year olds 50 year olds struggling to um, make ends meet so we are really now in a place where we actually have to uh, do something about it and uh, you know if you know someone who needs help you need to um speak up you know yeah. d don't do this thing mind your own business it's um, it, sometimes when minding your own business can be a little bit too late. And I talk about this in my book. It's very important to speak up and it's very important to put your nose where it doesn't belong because yeah. mental health needs it. And, um, you know, be involved in other people's businesses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. What save a life is for the good. Yes. And save a life because you never know whose life you might be saving. Like for myself, I was diagnosed at the age of 12 with depression. I didn't know what depression was. And, and it affects any age and any sex out there, like male, female, child, and children are affected. And with this pandemic, I am scared because I am noticing that a lot of people are closing up. I'm noticing that even on the live podcast, people are closing up. It's almost like the opposite effect, right? You're you're told yeah. to go skip, you won't skip. Yes. If yes. you're told yes. to speak, you won't speak. And and that's what I'm seeing with this pandemic is that people are closing up and it scares me because I know that the numbers are going to spike with mental health. Yes. Yeah. And like anything, you know, when when you take people out of their comfort zone, their mental health starts to struggle. Yep. It might not be in the place of depression. It could be just a struggle, a stress, anxiety. Um, but eventually, it will start going into that deep spiral of very dark place. Um, so we want to catch them up on the top so we can help them. Um, and like you said, this this pandemic, uh, you know, shut down, lockdown. Uh, humans are not meant to be stuck in between four walls. So. Um, I am like uh, with with my one to one coaching. I'm offering free sessions for people if they want to ring up and just chat about something or do like a live, um, you know, conversation on Facebook or Zoom or whatever. But like you said, they're not reaching out. They they're nope. not even putting their hand up. They're not asking for help whatsoever. And that scares me. And that's the scary part. It really yeah. scares me as well. Yeah. And. Um, uh, you know, we have the, you know, the qualifications, the ability to help um, and we are here to help and we're helping for free. So you not even have to part from your money because a lot of people are financially stuck at the moment and they're still not putting their hand up, which is the yeah. most scary part. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are still a lot of services that are free out there. And just yes. because there is no walk-in clinics, there are phone calls, there are emails, there are video conferences there are ways but i'm i'm really getting scared because a lot of people are not reaching out 
and yes. with everybody being isolated you don't know who's in danger anymore you don't know Absolutely. and not everyone is living in a safe home like those are things that are also affecting people you know Absolutely. so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's one of the things um, I said just the other day. We were just a couple of friends talking on Zoom that if the pandemic doesn't kill you, the mental health will. Yep. Uh, it's it's just sad fact. So that's why we need to everyone out there who has got the ability, qualifications and the experience of helping with mental health should really just get very proactive and get out there and start really flooding the market with this fact that reach out there's no judgments just yep. speak to us we have got the ability to help and we have got the experience and the qualifications to help and uh, uh you know just saying saying i need help or making that phone call or that even just an email it's it's not going to make you a less of a person if anything you, you are a lot more braver than the rest of them yep Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's not weakness by asking for help. No. That's one thing no. I want to put out there. Asking for help is not weakness. It's a strength. No. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. It's it's the biggest strength because getting your, yourself help, saving your life, then you can then make that ripple effect and save others as well. And that's exactly what I did, saved my yeah. life, and then ripple effect now. Exactly, the ripple effect. Yeah. Yes. And, and I'm a strong believer in that. Like, we meet yeah. each other for a reason. Like, you're in Australia. Like, there was a reason Absolutely. why we needed to connect. The universe put us together. And here yes. we are today, both talking yeah. about mental health, both who have lived and are living with mental health. You know, yes. both Absolutely. are authors who have shared our stories. And, you know, it, we need to get it out there. We need to give a voice to mental health. We need to not be yes. so scared of it and yeah. just share because sharing is healing and it's going to make a difference. And if we don't share, we're not healing. We're not creating a change. We're not doing anything. We're still, we're like water that's not moving. And I don't like that. So if anybody out there, any of my viewers out there, if you'd like to reach out to you, you get at, I'm sure she, she's going to put her information after the show into the comments. So you can reach out to her. You can check out all of her incredible traveling and workshops that once this pandemic is over i'm hoping it's soon <laughs> so maybe i might just check that out and do a workshop and go to australia yeah, you never absolutely. know right yeah. there's a reason for us meeting and and if they'd like to get your book they can get it on amazon and you have other places as well you said again could you yeah, repeat so this? amazon and my website okay. um obviously you know like um amazon just like anything you know takes people's hard work and makes money on it <laughs> <laughs> majority of the money than the authors itself so yeah I prefer if you went straight to my website but um i'll put the link with this uh for my website which is traveling with me myself and i.com um, and traveling is spelled with only one l uh which is perfectly fine in us it's not so fine in australia <laughs> <laughs> yeah and canada too and there are certain words I'll, I'll put and it's the us kind of way and then they'll say that it was wrong and i was like no it's not wrong that's how we learned in school and i'm like okay different, yeah. different countries yeah, different yeah. ways right so yeah in my defense i really didn't care i'm dyslexic <laughs> i can't spell to save myself so i was just like okay it looked better to me so i went with that <laughs> yeah so are you involved in any other things besides your book and your workshops do you do anything else i i do quite a lot of uh, volunteer work um, okay. so um and and also public speaking so motivational speaking and um keynotes or guest speaking um and they're all all connected so all connected with my book um, they're all connected with my workshops, my retreats, my public speaking. They're all connected in the sense they're all mental health. And they're all um, like with my story, with my mental health was mainly affected by dyslexia. And uh, for a very long time till maybe like, I don't know, maybe last five years, I didn't want to actually tell people that I was dyslexic. I was that embarrassed of that fact. So now to be able to say it and own it and uh, don't care what the world says, I feel um, if I can do that, quite a lot of you can step out of your shell, uh, mm -hmm. break that wall and, you know, start to really just be you and, uh, um, you know, help your mental health and then start to help others and 
that's the only way we can actually go around and, and helping everybody that, you know, mental health is, is actually really a, a real thing and it's really affecting a lot of us and uh, we can shift that and make it good mental health and start to really enjoy each other and enjoy our lives and have that perspective in life where everything we do is our choice and our reality is created by us and uh, uh, we have the total control we have the total power of what kind of life we want to live yep i totally agree it it, it starts with you and it ends with you it, it's nobody else absolutely. it's all you so yes, if absolutely. anybody would like to reach out and have their stories on tea time my platform my platform my platform is for everyone men women and children of all ages and i strongly bring awareness to mental health of grief and abuse i want to bring those three things i've lived with those three those three things and i want to break that stigma so if anybody would like to reach out to me you can send me a dm on miss liz's tea times and tea, tea time and tea parties making a difference and if you'd like to reach out to yogita you can reach out to her as well she, she's going to have all that information in after the show and i want to thank you so much for joining me all the way from australia i truly am honored and I have been following your Facebook page. So you do have a Facebook page as well, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. And and I like on your Facebook page that you put, let me know who you are. Not what you do or your titles, but who you are. Because yes. a lot of people yeah. don't know who they are. And I like that you no. put that out there. You yeah. know? Yeah. It's extremely important. I have uh, created like every uh, Facebook group, especially you join. Um, people just talk about their businesses and they talk about everything except for who they are. So yep. I'm hoping this gets contagious and we all kind of like, um, you know, take indulge in this. Who am I? Yep. And talk about who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't know who they are. No. They know who, who they've been told to be or what they're, what they think they are, but they don't know who they are. No, so absolutely. I like that you have that out there yeah. and you know, a lot of more people need to be talking about that and you know, uh, the mirror effect, like look in the yes. mirror. My children tell me that all the time. I'm looking in the mirror <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, not today. Today there's no mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But in hindsight, it's very, very important. If we can all look in the mirror and just literally be proud of who we are, this world will be a better place. There won't be any epidemic to deal with in future. There won't be any mental health to deal with because we are doing the right thing by not yep. just us, but by the the environment, the you know the the whole universe. We're doing the right thing, and that's where I think the shift needs to be made. We have literally lost that doing the right thing is not just for you; it's for everyone. But it well, starts with you. Yeah. Exactly. When it starts with you and you work on yourself, then the ripple effect happens, right? Exactly. Because then the next person works on themselves and then yeah. the world will become a better place if we all just work on it, on ourselves, not on each other, but on ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't have to work on the other person because yeah. like when I do the uh, retreats, a lot of people come to me and they go, um, can you fix me? This is my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that all the time. Can you fix me, Miss Liz, with a cup of tea? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and and your heart breaks because that's their state that's their perspective you know yeah. uh, they, that they're broken you're not broken don't that that's the worst thing you can think about yourself you're not broken if anything you're misguided so you know once you un like i talk to people and i say wipe this slate clean like delete all the programming and relearn like unlearn to learn again so to speak and we have a comment in the watch party because I have a watch party going as well as a studio. Oh, okay. And Lee's a good friend of mine. She says, I was asked one day from a good friend. He said, so who are you? I totally stopped and I did not know how to respond. All, all I said was, who am I? Several times and, and nothing. I have now found out more about me. Yeah, that's perfect. She should be very proud of herself that that is an amazing very powerful thing um once you start to find more about yourself that's very powerful 
It is. Once you start working on yourself, you realize, oh my goodness, I'm such a good person, you know, Absolutely. or I Absolutely. I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's this is the big thing about self love. Like in my book, I talk about self love and inner self love. This is the inner self love. Once you start really knowing who you are, like you said, you're a good person. You were born to be a good. Nobody is born on this planet as a murderer or a killer or a rapist or a, you know, or or, or a bitch, so to speak. You know that nobody's born that way. Yep. The society does all these things to us. So once you start to really look at who am I, just start answering that question, the self-love just unfolds. It's automatic. Like because it does. You, you, you will see how amazing you are. And you mm -hmm. start to really accept the fact that you are an amazing person. Yeah. So you don't have to go out there and, and you know make over and do hairstyles and fancy clothes and all of those things, which you can if you want to. But don't do it to make yourself feel good. Do yeah. it because you can. No, this is just yep. a, a different concept, different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Reward yourself, but don't do it because that's what you think is yeah. expected, yeah. right? Yeah. And if you, if you don't put makeup on, you're not a less person. If yeah. you put makeup on, you're not a more person. Like you are still that same person. Yeah. You're, you're, you're putting makeup on because you enjoy putting makeup on. Yes. You know, or you Absolutely. want to make yourself feel good. It has yes. nothing to do with anybody else. If they like Absolutely. you because you got makeup on, it's because it makes you feel good. So you're doing it for you. Yeah. And I, and I say that all the time because a lot, I get that asked a lot. Why are you putting makeup on? You're beautiful the way you are because <laughs> it makes me feel good. And yes. I like spoiling myself. I like making yeah. myself and taking that time for myself, right? The self care yeah. of myself of saying, yeah. you know what? I want to have big bloopy eyes today or big poppy lips or you know Absolutely. it's it's self-care for myself it has nothing yeah. to do with anybody else and yeah. it's not about the likes or the loves oh my goodness you look so much better with no it's not anything it's yeah just a reward has, to myself it has a different reward like you just yeah. said i love it how you said it it has a different reward like you know if even if you had a beautiful face make up in a nice dress if you walked outside in public and somebody looked at you and said oh that doesn't suit you it doesn't matter their opinion because you still feel amazing yeah. and their opinion is just like oh whatever you know you yours is is yours to keep i i appreciate it but keep it to yourself yeah and that's the difference like where else if you were to go out there and their opinion really shattered you and hurt your feelings that's when you really need to do the work. Yeah. You know, that's that's the big sign that you really need to do the work because other other people's opinion hurts you still. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what I, I, I had one girlfriend that said, you know, uh, don't you ever share stuff? And I said, you know what? I share a lot of people's stuff and I do what I can each day for everyone, but I take time for myself as well. Yes. And it's not about the likes and the shares. And the followers, it's if it makes a difference, then I'll share it. If if I find that it's just nonsense and just because, you know, I'm not going to, but that's my choice. And for you to think that your your opinion is going to change my life, it's not, right? No. It like I'm still gonna go to bed at night, I'm still gonna sleep. You might not like me the next day because I've told you, you know what, I don't want to share your stuff, but that's <laughs> something that you need to work on. It's not something that I need to work on. It's yeah. Yeah, and I and I'm learning that with a lot of self healing, right? Because I'm doing a lot of self inward stuff. Is if you don't like it, oh well, just move on. Yeah. It is yeah. what it is, and there's a reason for it. It might not happen the way that you want to see it happen, but it's time to yeah. just move on. It's yeah. if we whine and cry about it. By the time we whine and cry about it, we could have done ten other things that we really would have enjoyed doing. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing, just a, a little bit deeper level to the, you know, sharing stuff from other people on social media or even in real life with people is that everything that is yours has your energy. Yep. So if other people's things or posts or information doesn't have the same energy, I don't share it yep. um, because I want to keep that energy for for that reason because the energy that I'm working for and towards is love and it vibrates at a different level. Whereas if your energy is just ego or hunting for like, uh, you know, like customers because they're preying on people to buy yep. things on Facebook. Whereas I am really just pushing the fact that 
if you buy this book and read this book, this is going to help you change, inspire, yep. empower who you are. And if you don't think it is for you, then you can give it to someone who will use yep. it and who will benefit from it. So there's total difference in, in that. So I don't want other people's post changing the energy of my my message. So exactly. We don't want to feed into the energy, right? We want it. There's yeah. energies that we can feel that we're like, oh, no, it's not for me. And I need to just remove myself from it. I'm not going to feed into it. I'm just going to just say, you know what? Thank you. But it's time to move on. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And like I said, I am really, truly, it was amazing getting to know you. And we're not going to stop knowing each other because now the journey has just begun. And absolutely. if anybody would like to know anything more about you, it will be all in the comments. So any of the viewers, if you have any questions, reach out to you, Gita. Um, if you have a question that you would like me to get out to you, Gita, I can get it out to her. Just leave it in the comments, send me a message. And if anybody would like to see anything special on tea time, send me a message. My door is open and I'm willing to try anything if it makes a difference, because that's what we are all about is making a difference. And we're going to do that with one cup of tea at a time. And thank you so much you Gita for joining me today and thank you for coming all the way from Australia so I everybody in Cornwall you've got thank a taste of Australia so tonight so. thank you for reaching out thank you for having me and thank you for letting me share my message and it has been a pleasure to get to know you obviously like you said our journey won't finish here it's yep. just started and I look forward to an amazing friendship thank you so for much. sure so thank you all and join me May 7th, I have Megan Cummings from Cornwall, Ontario. She'll be sharing her story on PTSD. So, thank you guys. Bye.